Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now you may notice the 240 is in a bit of a different spot today and that's because uh, I was driving it around the block, you know, wearing some of the rust off the brakes since I still can't get the car on the road and uh, it completely died and I had it towed back to my house. So we're going to see if we can figure out what the problem is. I know the fuel pumps are not coming on so that at least um, narrows that down a little bit. But now I'm going to show you a couple things I'm going to do to try and diagnose what's wrong exactly that's causing the fuel pumps not to work. Whether it's bad pumps, whether it's bad wiring somewhere, bad fuses. So we're going to check all that out in this video. See if I turn the key, we have no fuel pump. You can't hear anything power on. If I turn the key on, nothing. And we have absolutely no fuel, not even a cough. So that's uh, definitely no power to the fuel pumps or fuel pumps that are bad. And I don't think it's that because the fuel pumps were working just fine up until it died. So uh, they, they, you know, they weren't making any bad noises. They sounded perfectly fine. So I think we have more of a wiring issue or a computer issue going on here. Okay, so the first thing to always check is your fuses. Fuse number four is your main fuel pump. Oh, sorry, your in-tank fuel pump and that fuse looks good so we'll pop that back in and then fuse number six this is the red one here is the main fuel pump and that looks good as well so we know the fuses are okay so now we know we have we have a problem possibly with our fuel pump relay so now i'm gonna show you the fuel pump relay. It's a common issue on 240, so I'll show you how to swap that out really quick. It's not hard at all. Okay, so the fuel pump relay on a 240 is normally going to be right up here, kind of by the ECU. There's a little clip that holds it in place. Um, this is what it looks like, a connector there. So we're gonna pull this out. If I can get it with one hand, it may be difficult. Oh, come on. And I think I'm just gonna have to cut real quick. There's the old relay. Here's the other one I've got on hand. So I got that in there. Let's see if we get any luck starting this baby up. Just grab the key. See if we hear any fuel pumps. I still don't hear them. So that's definitely not the relay that's our problem. So now we move on to a bit of uh, a little bit more complex diagnostics, but really nothing too hard at all. You can easily do this at home, what I'm about to do. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna grab a paper clip and you wanna bend it like this so that you can jump a couple fuses. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove fuse number four, which is the in-tank fuel pump. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our paper clip we're gonna touch it to the sprung, to the spring side of fuse number six, which is always powered, along with seven, eight, nine, and 10. So you could use any of those, but this one's the closest. And now we wanna touch it to the left side of fuse number four and see if the fuel pump comes on, which it is. So we know that the in-tank fuel pump is working. Now, if we connect it to the other side of the fuse, we should power the other pump, which can be harder to hear. I don't really hear anything, but it is a very hard one to hear, so. But since we're getting power to that fuel pump, I'm assuming that it's not uh, a wiring issue, instead it's a computer issue. So now, if you can get that to work, there's a next step that you have to do to verify what the problem really is. Okay, so next step, by the way, you wanna make sure you put fuse number four back in before you do this. So as you can see, I took the fuel pump relay back out and it goes like this, this orientation. So if we look on the relay, we can see there's, uh, let's see if I can shake less. We got some numbers on here. We got 30 on the very bottom left and we have 87 slash two uh, we want to jump both of those in the connector here. So we're going to do the same thing. Just line it up like you normally would. So let's see. So, so we're going to jump this upper right and the middle left, if I'm not mistaken. 
So I'm going to try to attempt this with one hand. I don't know how well it's going to go. Let's see. Now, if the fuel pump comes on and we do this, then we know, as you can see, I've got a pink label ECU up there, which is has a very high failure rate. So let's see. see if we can jump these. It's proving difficult with one hand. <laughs> Hold on a second. So I can report that jumping the relay connections did nothing. Though the fuse panel did. If it works when you try to jump the relay, that means that it's likely your ECU that's bad. But in my case, that didn't happen. So I went over here to where the coil is. And over here, there's usually a 30 amp uh, fuel pump main fuse. And as you can see, it totally melted. And here's the other half of it. I tried to pull the fuse out and that's what it resulted in. It pulled the whole top of the fuse off. I ended up having to break the whole thing. I don't think that would work if I stuck another fuse in there just to see if the fuel pumps would work. So I'm gonna try and pick up a uh, socket for that and another 30 amp fuse and try to splice that in and hopefully that'll fix our problem. Okay, so one trip to the auto parts store later, we got a 25 amp fuse holder. There was a 30 amp fuse in there. I've done a bit of research. Uh, it looked all corroded inside and I looked back at my earlier videos and this already looked kind of melted and it doesn't smell fresh. So I think uh, there was just some corrosion in there because this is not by any means a waterproof um, fuse holder. So I got a splash proof one here, some new 25 amp fuses. This is I'm gonna be splicing some wires. I got a couple of these guys uh, that also heat shrink. Couldn't find the right size, but it should be close enough. And since we're working on wiring, we want to, of course, take off our negative terminal. That'll do it. There we go. And we just want to put that somewhere where it's out of the way and it's not going to ground out on anything. All right, this is going to be a bit of a different uh, way of making this video just because I really need two hands because it's cold outside and uh, stripping wires in it and such with one hand is not going to be possible. So I took the old uh, connector there and I just cut it off with some wire cutters. Uh, I got you know, that some tool there. I don't know what they call it. <laughs> and uh, then I stripped the end of both the wires. Make sure you know which one is which. It's obvious for me because one's running straight to the positive terminal. One's running um, down into this loom over here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our new fuel holder and we're going to strip the ends off of that which are actually already pre-stripped which is a good okay, thing. So here's our new splash proof uh, fuse holder. So you can see this little rubber cap goes over there. I slid the fuse in. I put a 25 amp fuse because that's what's supposed to be there. Um, obviously the previous owner or somebody who last worked on the car had uh, put in a bigger fuse for some reason i don't know why but so now we're basically going to take god the can't focus is way way off today we're gonna strip those ends off and then we're going to basically join them together and crimp them with um those little uh, butt connectors that i showed you before here i've got our my uh fuse hooked up here simply just splice them together and crimp them i'm going to heat shrink these eventually um but yeah, so I hooked them all up and the car's back in business. I'll give her a start up here. Starts great now, it runs better than it did before. That was without giving it any gas. And that was all it took. So um, just a little bit of diagnosis on the 240. It's the first time I've had to diagnose um, an electrical problem that I you know, didn't really know what's going on. I had no idea that that fuse was even there. I thought it was just the fuses in the fuse panel and the relay there, but you learn something new every day. Well, that uh, pretty much concludes this video. Let's see, everything's, it's missing a little bit. It probably needs a bit more gas. It's been sitting for a little. It's running great. <laughs> That's awesome. So, I hope you guys um, found this information helpful. Um, sorry if it's not the most detailed video in the world because I'm also learning as I'm filming the video too because I didn't really know what I was doing so much. So, uh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you stay tuned. I'll have some videos coming up on our other 240 soon and maybe the V70. 
Um, so yeah, I hope to see you guys there and I'll catch you in my next video. Okay, apparently it turns out that was not a wiring hack job. That's apparently how it comes because my 240 wagon has the exact same thing. Hooked up to the positive. So this just seems to be a bad design on Volvo's part. Probably one of the only few badly designed things on these cars.